Most of us, at one time or another, suffer from pressure of work. But just a few hundred men in Britain work under pressure all the time. And among them are the compressed air workers, the men who build tunnels below water level. For a new power station at Tilbury, Essex, an airtight iron shaft, open at the bottom, has been sunk onto the river bed. Compressed air, pumped into the shaft, keeps water from seeping up and allows these men to dig further down into the bed of the river. They work in eight-hour shifts. From the shore, other teams of compressed air workers are digging two 600-foot tunnels which will eventually join up with the shafts dug by the teams under the river. When they're finished, these tunnels will supply the power station with 30 million gallons of cooling water every hour. But it would be impossible to build tunnels like these, nearly 100 feet below water level, without compressed air. You and I live in a normal air pressure of nearly 15 pounds per square inch. In these tunnels, the pressure has to be stepped up by nearly 40 pounds per square inch to prevent them from flooding. This means that anyone working in the tunnel breathes in air, which is a mixture of oxygen and nitrogen, at a pressure more than three times greater than he does normally. More oxygen gives more energy, but an excess of nitrogen can bring on an attack of what's known as the bends, pains in the joints, when a man comes back to normal air pressure again. So, men must be young and fit and have regular medical examinations. And in case any of these effects develop after he's left the site, every compressed air worker carries a special identity card. Compressed air is also used by divers. At this famous London firm, which has been manufacturing diving equipment for more than 80 years, trainee divers come from all over the world to attend the monthly instructional course. As a diver descends, the pressure of water increases, and so must the pressure of his air supply. So compressed air is pumped down to him. In the diving tank, which is only 12 feet deep, he needs an extra pressure of five pounds per square inch of air. More than that, and his suit would inflate, and he'd shoot to the surface out of control. With less pressure, he'd find it difficult to breathe. The whole point of diving is to be able to work underwater, so the diver must practice movement control. And then get down to more practical jobs. Underwater, a piece of wood wants to get to the surface, of course, so it has to be lashed down. For a diver to go on working below water for up to four hours, he needs air at whatever pressure enables him to breathe comfortably. Compressed air is, of course, simply air pumped under pressure, just like pumping up a bicycle tyre. It can be stored in bottles, so that an operator becomes independent of air pumps. The self-contained breathing apparatus is now standard equipment in those industries where gases, fumes or smoke might be encountered. It's simple to operate, and that bottle of compressed air on his back gives a man about half an hour's breathing time. Oil refineries, like this giant installation at Forley, Hampshire, use compressed air breathing apparatus for examining their 325 petrol and oil storage tanks. Every day, these million-gallon petrol tanks are checked by a two-man team. The roof of the tank floats on the top of the petrol. One man, wearing breathing apparatus, goes down onto it to make sure there is no excessive escape of gas. The other man stands by. Only when the check is satisfactory is maintenance work allowed in the area.
This atomic age is finding new uses for compressed air. At Harwell, materials come to the high activity handling section for testing. In cells with massive concrete walls five foot six inches thick, heavily radiated materials are checked by mechanical hands. But the checking instruments that go into these cells must later be decontaminated or cleaned. And for this job, an operator gets into a pressurized suit. He's dressed up in a lightweight outfit like a spaceman with every part of his body protected. Then he's connected to his air supply. The air is continually pumped in under pressure and escapes through a vent in the suit as he moves into the contaminated area. The heavily radiated materials are removed from the cells mechanically. Then the contaminated testing equipment is brought through to the cleaning bay. The compressed air escaping from the operator's suit prevents any of the radioactive dust from getting in. Back at Tilbury's new power station, there's 18 months of compressed air work before the tunnels are finished. The 30 men who work in them can earn up to 60 pounds each for a 40 hour week but it's tough work in rough conditions. To keep 30 men working over 12 months, 150 men had to be taken on. To breathe and work in compressed air doesn't worry a healthy man. It's coming back to ordinary air pressure again that can be troublesome. After climbing to the top of the workings, the men pass through an airlock. Then they rush off as fast as they can to the medical room. Having been in pressure up to 40 pounds per square inch for eight hours, they have to be gradually decompressed and brought back to normal pressure again. Otherwise, the bends will set in. Once inside the sealed chamber, they're blown up to 40 pounds above normal again. A medical attendant is there 24 hours a day. A doctor is on call. The pressure is dropped back to 14 pounds per square inch above normal fairly quickly. But from then on, decompression takes about two hours to complete. Some men work in compressed air for years and are rarely affected by it. Others try it once and never again. But you don't have to tunnel below the water level to realize the compressed air is vital. Ever had a puncture? 